Sure. Okay, so um, yeah, thanks for joining me today. And I just wanna go through a couple points. I know you guys had a couple questions, um, but I do wanna touch on a couple points that are just usually a little bit tricky for people to figure out, I guess, during the application process, and then talk about overall how to really strengthen your application to stand out. Um, so I'm going to start with, I'm just gonna go over a couple different pieces and kind of work through the list. Do you guys, um, yeah, first I will just start with a couple pieces and then move to the actual application. And then honestly, if you guys have questions at any point, since it's just a few of us, just speak up and don't wait till the end to ask the questions, just ask them kind of as we're going through. Okay, right, so I'm gonna share, first I wanna talk about the essay. Um, can you guys see my screen? Perfect, okay. So, the essay is a very important part of the application process. I would say kind of the four key points of having a good application are your academic strengths, your work experience in healthcare, the strength of your writing ability in your essay, and then how well you perform in the interview if you're selected for an interview. So that's why I want to go over the essay. Um, on our admissions committee, we do have someone who is a very strong business writer and really drills people on their writing abilities. So as far as looks go, this is kind of what we want to see. So these are last year's questions, but essentially kind of like a header and bold. Um, feel free to single space or double space, whatever you're up for. Um, and then the next question in bold, leave your response, the next question in bold. And so breaking it up like that will really help us define where your answers are. Um, I would say, so we don't really have a cap on how long your essay should be or shouldn't be, but if it is single space, I would kind of max it out at three pages. Um, try to get it into two if you can, but that's just kind of somewhere to hover around as far as length goes. Do you guys have any questions specifically about the essay? Okay. Um, if you guys haven't used Grammarly, I would definitely recommend downloading Grammarly and spell checking it with Grammarly. It does a little bit more than Microsoft Word spell check does. You know, it really make sure you have all the right commas and the right language in all the right places. So if you don't already use Grammarly, it actually came from a recommendation from someone on our admissions committee that students do that because we've seen some pretty not so great essays. Um, and it can really, it can be the reason that you aren't admitted is because you have poor writing skills. So I do want to put some emphasis on that. Um, so if you guys don't have any other questions, then I will move on to the next item. Um, next, I want to talk about resume. So we don't ask too much of a resume. Um, I just have an example pulled up. If anyone needs a template because they're unsure of kind of how their resume looks, I can share this template with you. This is the one that our careers manager, Catherine Adair, she uses this for her students. Um, I do wanna point out that the LinkedIn profile link is on here. So while you're working on your resume, definitely make sure that your LinkedIn account is up to date and that you've updated that um, and made it as good as you possibly can. She'll, if it matches the program, our admissions coordinator will work, or sorry, our uh, careers manager will help you with that, but she, she really wants to find someone who is already kind of ahead of the game. Um, as far as experience goes, so work experience is one of the biggest things that we're looking for, especially in healthcare. Uh, and then in addition, we're looking for people with management experience. So if some of your roles aren't clearly, hi Ashton, how are you? Good. Um, Good, we're just going over, so I just went over the essay and we can talk about that later if you have any questions about that. But right now we're just going over the resume portion of the application. And as I told the other girls, feel free to butt in and interrupt with questions at any point. Don't wait to the end to ask any. Okay, perfect. So um, as I was saying, if you have positions that you do have responsibilities of leadership and of management, where whether you're managing projects or you're kind of managing or training people, use this portion on your resume to emphasize that. So typically where you would leave a description, um, 
So like right here is where you would typically leave a description of what you're doing at work. Go into detail here about exactly what you're doing. Um, the more you can provide us on the resume, the better it is for you. And feel free to include all and any experience that you have. So any um, volunteer work, any work as you had kind of in high school, if it seems somewhat applicable, even if you aren't sure, just go ahead and add it. Um, the rule of sticking to one page on your resume doesn't really apply for our program as far as the application process goes. So if you need to go into two or three pages, please do. Again, I, we would rather see more of what you have than less. Um, and then definitely include any languages that you speak uh, and then any awards that you've received or any clubs that you've been involved in. Just really, like I said, just include anything and everything here. Um, any questions here? Okay. Um, oh, yeah. It was the length, but you answered that. So thank you. Cool. Yeah. I would always say, or, you know, don't cram it in, just go a little bit longer if you need to. <laughs> um, as far as resume goes and work experience, we are looking for someone who has um, closer to two years of healthcare experience. So if you don't fulfill that, um, look for other areas in application that you can strengthen uh, if you're kind of, if that's your weaker point. Um, and if it is, if you don't meet the two years, that's fine. Again, strengthen in other areas, but just do as best as you can to, again, list everything and anything possible. Cool. Um, you don't have any other questions on that. And Ashton, if you need a copy of a resume template, I can send that one out that I was just sharing. That would be awesome. Cool. Um, so next I want to talk about letters of recommendation. Um, although they're not required for the program, it is nice to see two letters of recommendation and we're looking for professional letters of recommendation. So ones from current supervisors or different managers that you interact with at work. Try to avoid the academic letters of recommendation unless you, you had like a mentor or they really were a close relation, you guys really had a close relationship with each other. Um, so do focus on getting that. And we're kind of looking for specific, specific examples that you could, or that you've done at work where you perform good leadership, that you were good to work with. Um, you know, the more examples they can provide, the better. And just let them know that we're looking for something really personalized versus something short and copy and pasted. And just looking for really strong recommendations there. As far as where it goes on the application, some of you may have already figured this out, but um, so here's the application. The recommendations are actually kind of below where some of you might expect. Um, so you can just click here and that's where you'll input information for the letters of recommendation. Um, once you put in their information, you can send them reminder emails, but do this probably very early on in the process. I'm not sure how far along all of you are in the application process, but the sooner you can get the letters of recommendation, the better, because as soon as your application is submitted, we start to move really quickly and we just wanna make sure that they're all in there before we make a decision. Um, and we want to prioritize making a decision versus waiting for one letter of recommendation for weeks and weeks. So definitely go ahead and uh, get those started if you haven't already. Um, any questions about letters of recommendations and who those should come from? Sounds good. Um, okay, while I am here, I'm gonna go over a couple different points on the application process. So as far as the program goes, some of you might already know, but we only admit in the fall, so make sure that you select fall 2021 here. Spring 2021 is an option on the application, but that's not an op option for our program, but it is for some other programs. So do select fall 2021. Um, is anyone here interested in the professional MHA program? I don't think so, but okay. Um, as far as kind of uh, this optional information that you can put in here, it's totally optional, but it does help you if you do have any diversity factors in the scholarship process. So do feel comfortable to submit it here. Otherwise we just use it for reporting purposes. 
Um, when it comes to the education history, um, did anyone go to BYU Idaho and have troubles finding? Okay, did you find your school in here? Um, I did it a couple weeks ago. I don't think I did. I think I just typed it in. Okay. You can also search by city and type in Rexburg and it will pull up that way. I think that's what I did maybe. Okay, cool. Um, and then as far as this goes, so when you are submitting your transcripts, we're looking for unofficial transcripts and just make sure they're clear and easy to read. We don't need your official transcripts until after someone's admitted to the program. So please make sure they're unofficial. If you do send official transcripts, I won't see them because they're in a sealed envelope that goes somewhere else. Um, so do include unofficial transcripts. For those of you who haven't graduated yet, if you can include a transcript that has the current classes you're enrolled in, that will be fine. And then if people are admitted, we'll ask for additional transcripts, usually um, proving that you've graduated because you do need a bachelor's degree to get into our program. Um, any questions on kind of transcripts or education history, anything like that? There, there is an option to send an official transcripts um, to your email, like for Salt Lake Community College. It's been so long that I've been there, it's, I can't get in. So is that an option if I upload that official transcript to that application? Yeah, as long as it's an electronic version, that should be fine. Um, and just make sure it's that we can read it. Usually they're not password protected, but if so, you can email it to me directly if there are any issues. Good question. Well, um, I will go on to the next section. So um, the financial support section, again, this is kind of optional, but we are interested if someone's interested in receiving financial support through scholarship funds or being a graduate assistant or a teacher's assistant. Those positions are available in the program. And we, although we can't guarantee anything during the admissions process, it's just nice to see that you're interested in being involved and things like that. Honestly, being a teacher assistant or graduate assistant is a really, really great way to be involved. Um, the graduate assistant pay, or it's a paid position and it comes with scholarship funds and then you get to work with the staff really closely. So if you are admitted to the program, I would kind of recommend going that route if you can. Um, as I mentioned in my email, I will be giving you guys a graduate referral code. So this is the code that will waive your application fee. I'll email this out after, but go ahead and write this down. So this is in the section of additional information at the very bottom, and it's called the graduate referral code. It's not a very obvious place, but it's DESB, so David Eccles School of Business, 2021 MHA, and that's in all caps. Cool. Looks like you all got that. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple other areas. Um, if you are submitting GRE or GMAT scores, you can do it here. Um, we don't require the GRE or the GMAT, but if you are below a 3.25, we really recommend that you take it because our minimum GPA is a 3.25. So go ahead and just submit those here. We're looking for anything above the 50th percentile. Um, these are just made up scores, so these are not ones that we're looking for. <laughs> but um, yeah, just go ahead and put those in there if you are submitting them or if you've taken any other tests in your past. Um, this section kind of gets people a little tripped up. So this is our program prerequisites. So we do have prerequisites for our program. It's a statistics course, an accounting or finance course. You don't need to have those completed to submit your application, but they need to be completed when you start the program. So if you are admitted and you haven't met the prerequisites, um, your admittance will be contingent on finishing those prerequisites, which we have alternative ways to do that. Um, this, to be honest, this section doesn't really translate over well when the application comes to me. So don't sweat this section. I mean, you can put it in here. Please do if you've taken these classes, but if you haven't, it's not the end of the world. Um, this is the section where you will upload your resume. Some people ask a question about that last page. Yes. 
Um, so I haven't taken a finance course yet. I'm taking it next semester. Um, do I just leave that blank or what should I do about that? Um, yes, you can just uh, leave it blank for now. And then if you have, have you, if, have you registered for classes yet? Do you have a printout of the classes? I do, yeah. Okay, so if you can include that in your transcript upload, that will be helpful just so we can see that you're, you're planning on taking okay, it. Okay, perfect. Good question. Any other questions about prerequisites? Um, as I was saying, for your resume and statement of purpose, we do have people that accidentally upload their resume twice or their statement of purpose twice, so just please make sure that you upload them both. Um, so this section, or any questions about, I know we already talked about resume and statement of purpose, but um, the questions for the statement of purpose can be found on our admissions requirements page, and they are, have been updated since they're updated in early August, so just make sure that. I'm sure you guys are all fine there. I couldn't find a link requirement. Is that on the website somewhere? The, the sorry, the oh the length requirement. Yeah. So we don't have a length requirement, um, but if it is single space, we're looking for something no more than about three pages. Okay. Just keep it concise. Um, we have a lot of essays to read, so make sure it's entertaining enough to keep our attention, and definitely put a personal spin on it and just make sure um, that it's really interesting to read. Okay, this section um, is a little bit interesting. This section asks about your professional experience. I wanna talk about this because this is purely for reporting purposes. This has nothing to do with um, whether or not you're admitted to our program. So we will look at your resume when it comes to your work experience, but this again is just for the reporting purposes for all the accreditations that we have. So uh, in the total professional full-time experience, so this will be in months, and this is any related professional work that you've done in healthcare kind of ever. Um, the next section is how many months you've worked in full-time experience after your undergraduate. So if you haven't graduated yet, this would be zero. Again, totally fine. This has nothing to do with you getting in or not. Um, and then if you have graduated, I would most of the time, this is a little bit lower than your total professional experience. So again, don't sweat this section, um, but do be as accurate as possible and remember that it is listed in months. So any questions on this section? Cool. Um, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing that for a little bit. Um, okay. So I wanna talk about the upcoming deadline. December 15th is our first priority deadline. Again, that is for kind of automatic um, scholarship funds if you are admitted. And that's based on how strong you are as an applicant. So whether or not you've met our prerequisites, your GPA, your work experience, um, letters of recommendation, all these things, your writing ability, and kind of just really how strong you are academically and with work experience, as well as your interview. Um, a lot of people are going to submit on December 15th, so my suggestion to stand out a little bit would be submit maybe at least a week before that, um, or even sooner if you can. I know it's about a month away, so if you can get your application in the next couple of weeks, I think that would give you just a little bit advantage in that scenario. There will be a lot of applications, and they probably won't be as quick of a turnaround time because it is right around the holidays. So. Um, again, I would recommend trying to get in early. If you do miss that deadline or your application isn't complete by that deadline, uh, you're still eligible for scholarship funds, but you just have to write a short essay and fill out a quick application for the scholarship funds. So if you don't feel like your application is ready, I would kind of wait because there are always scholarship funds available afterwards. Um, speaking of scholarship funds, they can range up to anywhere from $500 up to $20,000 for the automatic funds. Um, again, the stronger you are, the higher up you'll be on that dollar amount. And that's broken up through your four semesters in the program. So doing it over two years. Uh, you can, we also do scholarships for U of U alumni, um, diversity scholarships, scholarships for women pursuing healthcare, um, there is a whole slew of scholarship funds available. So definitely, if you are accepted, 
feel free to email me and say, hey, how can I get additional ones? Um, perfect, okay. Uh, I don't think any of you guys are pursuing a dual degree, are you? No, okay, perfect. Um, I'm potentially interested, but I am, because I work, I work full time and I'm, I'm not sure what I'm able to handle. Yeah. With a dual degree, but I'm interested. Yeah. Okay. And I think we talked about it a little bit. So how it works is essentially you'll still kind of take about 12 credits a semester, 12, 13 credits a semester. Um, so the amount of credits that you're taking wouldn't change, but just the length. Most of them take about three, three and a half years to finish. Um, and then obviously some people take longer too if they're shortening their credit hours per semester. I was going to say, um, if you have questions about that in the application process, let me know. There is a section at the beginning that will ask what your status is, if you've applied there, or if you're planning on applying. Um, so that's pretty straightforward in the application process, but I do want to mention that. Cool. Um, okay. And then the last thing I just want to talk about the interview. So not everyone will get an interview. It just depends on how strong you are as an applicant. But if you are selected with an interview, this is a very important aspect of the application process. So um, it's my strong recommendation to have a really professional background, dress very professionally. I don't think you could overdress for the interview. Um, dress as if you were going to a job interview for your dream job. Um, they will all be done on Zoom at the moment and probably for the foreseeable future. Um, so just make sure you know how to interview on Zoom and how, you know how to really express your energy over Zoom. Um, we are looking for someone who is articulate, who's mature, um, who can expand on critical thinking questions, who can, um, you know, really explain why our program in particular, specifically, you know, specifically in MHA and specifically at the University of Utah. Um, we actually kind of have a grading rubric for the interview process. So I just want to go over kind of all the different sections with you guys. Um, so one of the sections is, can the applicant articulate why they're interested in pursuing this career path? And also does the applicant have a realistic understanding of what a career in healthcare administration would entail and provide to them? So that's kind of one area that we're looking for. Um, another area is, what I mentioned, sorry, I know you guys are all writing, I'll kind of wait a second. Okay, so another section is, as I mentioned, kind of why an MHA and why our program in particular. So do research. A lot of you guys have talked with me already, so you know quite a bit, but um, you know, do a lot of research on our program and really go in depth about those reasons during the interview process. Expand a little bit more than you did in your essay if you can. Um, we know why we're great, so we just want to make sure that everyone else knows and like why you're choosing us over a different school. Um, another section is based on your skills and experience um, and preparedness for the program. So what experiences do you have that you can bring to the program? Like specifically, what are you going to bring to the classroom? What unique experiences do you have that other students can grow and learn from? Um, so if you're able to really expand on that, that's, that's awesome. Um, a lot of our students work really closely together. So we're looking for someone who can add value in the classroom. Um, another section is just general self-awareness. So being able to express how you learn from past, fail past failures and successes and if you're able to kind of try new things during that process. So it's nice if you can come prepared with specific examples of kind of a classic job interview question was like, you know, what was something hard that you went through? What was something that you failed at? Um, and being able to provide that specific example along with how you kind of grew from that and what you learned from that and how you would do things differently in retrospect.
Um, and then we rate on presentation. So how professional you came prepared? Are you making eye contact? Are you being articulate with your responses? Um, is your cat running around in the background? Things like that. So try to limit any distractions. Make sure your phone is off. Maybe even put it in another room. Um, have some prepared questions for after. All of our, pretty much all of our interviewers will ask what questions do you have for us. So make sure you have about two to three really good follow-up questions that are really in depth. Um, if you're selected for an interview, I will let you know who you'll be interviewing with so you can do research on them as well. And some people ask specific questions about them. Um, a lot of people ask specific questions about our program, things like that. Um, and then just overall preparedness and, you know, did, did the applicant show initiative? and just generally how well do they do. Um, so do put a lot of energy into the interview process because it can go a long way. Um, and then as far as kind of the process goes, so after the interview process, we make a decision pretty much within a week and then I'll notify you whether you're accepted or not accepted by email. Uh, and that's also where you would find out a scholarship fund. So that email comes about a week after the interview, depending on when your interview was. Um, all of our interviews right now are done on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and we have quite a handful of times available. So there's a lot to choose from. Um, any questions about the interview process or at this point, kind of anything? I've talked about most of the sections that I want to talk about. Um, but any questions that you guys can think of? I have a question um, regarding GRE scores. How, how, I'm a little on the fence about whether to submit my GRE scores and I'm looking for a little guidance about maybe why an applicant would or wouldn't submit their GRE scores. Yeah, good question. So I'll kind of talk about both. So a reason why someone would want to submit GRE scores is if their GPA was a little bit lower. So I said 2 point, or sorry, 3.25 is our threshold, but honestly, after our first admissions meeting, they're kind of anything around a 3.3, 3.35, they start to kind of like that's considered low now for us. Um, so I would recommend submitting them if they're above the 50th percentile in that situation because it just gives us more to go off of. Um, or if you're academic history was a little roller coastery. So, or if you started out really low and then kind of grew or you had good semesters, bad semesters, good semesters, bad semesters. Um, it'll just help us understand that you are prepared for our program. I think one of the biggest fears of the admissions committee is admitting someone who will fail out of our program. Um, so just really giving them reason to believe that you are successful academically. Um, the reason why someone wouldn't want to submit their scores are if they were, I would say, not equal to where their GPA is. So if you have a 3-5 GPA, which is a pretty good GPA, but then your GRE scores are like their sections under the 50th percentile, then I would say don't admit it or don't submit it at that point. Um, if, you, if you feel comfortable, feel free to say your scores here or you can just email me and or we can stay on afterwards and talk about that a little bit more in depth. Okay, thank you. Yeah, good question. Pat, what other questions? Um, how much or do they, does the University of Utah favor alumni of University of Utah versus from other schools? <coughs> um, I don't think there's much of a fav favor, um, which sounds kind of interesting, but ultimately we want to see someone who's just strong academically. If anything, we favor um a, just a general a college with a better reputation than a college with a lesser reputation so colleges that are harder versus easier yeah that's kind of my answer to that <laughs> okay thanks yeah all right what a, yeah um i guess i do have one more question so if Obviously, volunteer experience is not equivalent to work experience, but if we don't have quite as many years, maybe, as we want in healthcare specifically, um, can relevant volunteer experience 
help kind of balance the scales a little bit? Will they look at that too, just to show, I don't know, interest over yeah. a prolonged period of time? <laughs> yeah, so we'll look at it kind of from the interest aspect, not necessarily from an experience aspect. Yeah. Um, depending on what you did, so especially for the volunteering, if you can list specific duties that you did on your resume, that would be more helpful if you can list how many hours you worked a week or in general. Again, more information on that, the better. Um, and it can help supplement, if anything. So for students who usually are lacking in the healthcare experience department, um, we things that we wanna know, we want to know like exactly how you're going to find a job after graduation or how you're gonna find an internship. So if you, if you can come prepared in your essay or in the interview questions, um, how you plan on getting an internship with limited job experience or a job after school, um, that's helpful because I think that's kind of where people start to worry is, so we had someone with, I'll just be honest, I mean, he had like eight months of work experience in healthcare and a pretty decent GPA, but we just really are looking for healthcare experience now. So I know our careers manager, Catherine Adair, she just starts to worry because she's like, I can only do so much because now other programs and other, you know, people applying for internships are coming in with a lot more work experience. So it's not at that point you're competing against other people for these internships and she can only do so much. So if you can come together with a plan like, hey, this summer I plan on doing this, this, and this, or before I start the program, I plan on getting six months of healthcare experience. That would, you know, be helpful and I think would show maturity in the application process. So in this specifically in the question on the essay, we're asked what, you know, what jobs have prepared you for our program? In that section, you could elaborate on, okay, I don't have a lot of experience, but this is what I plan to do. And I know, and please, I know the world is kind of in shambles right now, but um, we were still able to find most of our, uh, most of our graduates jobs. And so I would just say, don't use that as an excuse um, at this point, because we have still been able to get through it as a program. So I think if you can just say like, I'm gonna keep trying and stuff like that, that would be beneficial. Does that answer your question? Um, okay, what other questions? I know it's only been a half hour. Um, Ashton, did you have any questions about the essay that we talked about before you hopped on? Um, maybe a little, um, nothing specific. Are you, are you talking about the personal statement or the essay? Yeah, yep. Um, no, I understand that you said no more than three pages, you know, as a guide. And if it is going to be that long, make it very interesting. Yeah. Um, and my understanding is it's just what you want to do in healthcare, basically, right? And what your goals are. Kind of. There is a critical thinking question. Um, so if you could change one thing about the healthcare industry, what would you change? Um, that's roughly the question. Uh, and yeah, kind of what your plans are and how you plan to succeed. What I was saying earlier is so kind of the four main things that we look at are your academic preparedness, your healthcare work experience, your writing ability in the essay. So I would focus more on writing ability than content, not like don't, please don't make it boring, but like I do really emphasize or put a lot of emphasis on um, the writing ability section of it. Definitely have someone proofread it and reread it and send it to multiple people. Um, and then the inter interview was kind of part four of those top four things. Question. <laughs> um, cool. Any other questions? So I'll stand with you, Heather, but I don't want to keep you guys on. Um, but I definitely want to be able to be a resource for you guys if you are having any questions. No? Cool. I don't have any other questions. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, please feel free to email me whatever you have. That's why I'm here. Like, don't ever feel like you're bugging me. I might be slow to respond some days just because we're getting really busy, but I will get back to you. Um, otherwise, thanks for joining me. I'll stay on with you, Heather. And 
Um, I'll send a follow-up email with that promo code in case you have any issues with it. And then, um, yeah, I'm excited to see your guys' applications come in. Okay, thank you so much. Thank I you think for your time. See you later.